obey and follow the teacher's instructions. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. What we are going to preach about today is not a popular concept in today's society. Uh, Elias, could you give me some sound? I need a little bit more. I don't want to be having to strain my voice. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. A little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there we go. Right there. Can you hear me all right? So this way, oh, John says, I can hear you real good. <laughs> This is not a popular topic that we're going to talk about today, but it should be. It should be because as a result of what we're going to learn today could transform your life and your relationship with Jesus. So let's go on to the book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 25. We have a lot going on this morning. I don't intend to preach too long, but that doesn't mean I won't. It's now 4.23. Let's just round it up to 4.25. So I'll keep track by that. It was 4.25 when I started. Thank you, brother. Give me that. Give, forgive me liberty. You know I will if I feel it. I mean, if I feel like I need to go, I'll ask permission and we'll go. Uh, but I want to be sensitive. We had a long weekend. A lot of people are tired. We had a very successful fundraiser and, you know, people are here practicing for the black lights, or I'm sorry, the silent praise that's going on next week. Uh, people were here till what, 3 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning. So I want to be respectful of people's time, but if the Holy Ghost moves, we can keep going because the Holy Ghost will give you the rest that brings the weary to rest. So if it happens, it happens. Either way, we'll be blessed. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's go to the word Exodus, and I just put Exodus, I don't know how I did that. Exodus. That must be a new book in the Bible. <laughs> Ex Exodus. Praise the Lord. I don't know how that happened, but I can fix it very quickly. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Exodus. Exodus. I should probably give up while I'm ahead because I'm making it worse. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Exodus 9 and 25. And the hail smote throughout all the land, Egypt, all that was in the field, I'm sorry, all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both men and beasts, and the hail smote every herb of the, of the field and break every tree of the field. So the hail that fell in the land of Egypt wiped out just about everything. Verse 26, and in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail? Was there no hail at all? That means nothing was destroyed. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today. Uh, we come before you in thanksgiving. We come before you uh, understanding that the season is coming of thanksgiving. And we are going to begin to put ourselves in that mindset. We ask that you would you know, bless the rest of the service. You've already blessed the onset of the service. But we also ask God that you would give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding and order our path according to the word. In Jesus' name and the church said amen. amen. Let's clap onto the Lord one more time before we're seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Many places would be ending church right now and we're just getting started. <laughs> Uh, but that's okay because see, there's something that we do to prepare a place for God. The things that we're involved in are preparing an atmosphere for when, when the Word of God comes, it plants the seed of knowledge and wisdom and hopefully obedience in your life. Um, a lot of places I'm not trying to criticize, but I'm just making a distinction between us and, and what happens in many other places. Is that there's the ground here, and they take the seed of God, which is the Word, and they throw it on this ground, but they haven't tilled the ground. So what happens is, is those seeds fall, and I'm not giving you this, the, the parable of the seed sower, I'm just giving you a vision or understanding. Uh, the ground is not tilled. You can spread the seeds all over the place, but how deep are they going to go? They're going to stay on the surface and see, I'm not interested in having a, a church that simply deals with the surface. 
I want a church that goes to the deeper places of God and to the deeper things of God. And we're finally getting to a place that we can start going into the deeper waters and get out of the shallows. Praise God. That is awesome. I am so blessed. Praise God. Getting back to the text, it says that there was a hail storm that came. Uh, who can tell me what number, and I had to look it up, so uh, if you don't get it, it's okay. What number plague of that was of the ten plagues? That must have been the lower. It was number seven. Number seven. The seventh hour, the seventh plague, where I'm not preaching about all the plagues and everything. There's a specific place that I want to take you from the word of God that has to do with the fear of of the Lord. Fear the Lord. There are so many places that will tell you, oh I don't have to fear my God, my God's not a God of fear. Really. And we're going to be talking about this for several weeks so if you don't see the, some scriptures that you thought would be in it, it's because we're just getting started. We're going to be talking about this for several weeks and then we're going to go into Thanksgiving or preaching about thanks or being thankful. But the idea is here that we have a hailstorm that comes down, kills everything, men, animals, even wipes out the trees. That would have to be some pretty big hail. We just had hail, what, a couple days ago? And I didn't see no trees dying, cats still walking around. No dogs yelping and the trees are still there. It, it even says the herbs, it even wiped out plants. Can you imagine how much hail that would have to be? How big the hail would have to be to knock down a tree? How big a piece of hail would have to be to kill a man? Because this ain't going to do it. That might hurt. This one might knock you out. But I'm thinking, there has to be some big hail. And a lot of it to kill a man or a beast. So we're looking at the intensity of this situation. And so much destruction and loss. But with the children of Israel, nothing. No hail. No death. No destruction. God is trying to give us an insight on what it's like to live for him. On what it's like to be his child. Because see, the Bible talks about the wrath of God is not going to be for us. We are going to be uh, separated from the wrath of God. We're not going to go through that. This is a good example of how that operates or how that happens. Where God can put his wrath on Pharaoh and the Egyptians, but not on the children of Israel. See, I want to share with you today that if you had fear of the Lord and did what the Lord said and obeyed God, that is one of the byproducts of your obedience as there can be a wrath that's poured out from him that you will not receive. That's what, that's what I like to have happen in my, I don't want God's wrath to go on me, so I'm going to follow him. Let's continue in the, in the verse. This, this is ex, uh, Exodus 9.27. We were just at 26. We're going to go on to 27. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous and I and my people are wicked. Verse 28, entreat the Lord for it is enough. He'd been through enough. He'd had enough of the wrath of God. And he said, entreat or call on the Lord, ask the Lord. That there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. So the Lord had beat on this man called Pharaoh and his people to the stuff where he said mercy. To the point where he's like, uncle, I'm saying uncle, okay, I'm done. We, look, I am a sinner, my people are sinners, and we're wicked people, we get it. We understand, and we're going to let you go. Has anybody in this place ever been to the point where you're like, I'm, I, I, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm done. God, I realize who I am. I recognize where I stand with you and right now that's not good. But I'm going to surrender to you, God. Because that's what he's doing. I'm going to let God's people go. In our case, I'll be letting the world go. We're going to let go of the things that we need to let go of to obey God. Have we ever been there? Let's pray. I mean, that's where I was at. I said uncle to God in 2001 when I was so tired of being tired, tired of loss, tired of failure, tired of feeling like an empty shell of a man. I had truly had enough. I had truly had enough. The question is, 
How long are we going to maintain that state of being? Uh, could you turn down the main just a little bit? Because I'm, you know, boom, boom. Thank you. So, let's continue. How long do you think Pharaoh kept up this feeling of repentance? Let's hope that the same doesn't happen to us. So it goes on to say in Exodus 29, And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know that the earth is the Lord's. Verse 30, But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. Now I'm going to get ready to preach. Can I preach? Can, can, I, can I deliver you a mindset of God without you getting angry with me? Because understand, I am not speaking from my own heart, from my own mind. And if it was up to me, I'd just let you do what you want. But it's not up to me, it's up to God. So can I give you the mind of God? In this church, we could go further... And, and the people who are not coming any longer, this is part of the issue. Because we've talked about what? Trusting the Lord. We've talked about God having our back. So that we know when God has our back, we can trust the Lord. And so once we're in those positions, we should be able to take another step and say, I'm going to fear the Lord. Because if the Lord, oh come on, I'm about to preach. If the Lord can take out my enemies, what can he do to me? the Lord could take out my enemies what could he do to me I need to fear what he can do if I've seen what if I, I believe the Bible cover to cover I just made a decision that that is the word of God that is the truth it came from God and I've seen in the word what he can do I've seen what he's capable of even to his own people who don't follow him. So what that does for me is it gives me a healthy fear or a better word might be respect for the Lord. I'm going to respect God. So in this situation Pharaoh has said I've had enough and I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to make it real simple so we can translate it easier to the church. You know how many times I've had people come to this altar or come to me and say, Pastor, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm not going to live that way any longer. I'm going to repent, get baptized, get the Holy Ghost because I'm done with that life. People have said it over and over again. Maybe I should say to them, that might not be true. Just as a warning, and maybe I'll do this from now on, to say to people, you know what? I know that you still will not feel the Lord. Even though you're coming up here and tell, you know, I always tell people, don't tell, oh, pastor, I'm never going to leave this church. Pastor, I love this church, and I'm never going to, you ain't got to worry about me. Those are, those are the first ones I worry about. Don't tell me, just do it. Just do it. Live it. Every day until Jesus comes. Now there's nothing wrong with being excited about God. But there are so many people. That's why he's, he's got space. Because Moses knew. I know Pharaoh what you're telling me. But I know you're still not going to fear God. There's people who have left here who clearly don't fear God. And what I'm trying to work on is the ones that I can work with. Because I can only work with you. I can work through them through video, and when I put up the videos, I'm hoping that they'll be able to see them. I've got a bunch I've got to put up. I'm way behind, but I, I'll get them up. I always do. I can work on them that way if they happen to go, and I know lots of people do because I see how many. I get counters on how many people have gone to the videos and watched them. But the fact remains, I, I'm going to tell you today, because you're here. You're the ones that I can see. And, and what I'm going to challenge you to do is not be one of the pharaohs. Not be one of the people that Moses is saying to, yeah, I know you're saying this, but I know it's not true. Now, if we look at how many people have been here and how many have left, we're looking about 40%. 30 to 40% have stayed in the church. And 60 to 70% out of all the people 
maybe 40. I, we used to be at 50%, but I don't think we're there anymore. So I'm kind of guessing. We might have 30 or 40%, but we're looking at 60 or 70% of the people not staying in the fear of the Lord. That's a lot of people. So what I want you to do and I want you to aspire is to make sure you're not one of those people. Ever. You're not going to be one of those people that comes to God and says, I'm done, I'm sorry. And three months later, you're right back out in the street. You're right back into your old life. You're right back into your sin that brought you to the place of being on your knees in the first place. He knew it. He was a man of God. And he knew what Pharaoh was saying was not true. Let's find out if that's the truth or not. So, you know what's funny is Moses did what he said he was going to do. And what God is asking you is to do the part you're supposed to do. If you'll do what God asks you to do, he will do what he said he'll do. Eric loves that one. I, I did that one just for him. Verse 33, And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thunder ceased. And the hail ceased. And the rain was not poured upon the earth. Verse 34. Make sure this is not you. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased. He sinned yet more. When you clean out your house. You could have seven more spirits come into you. Than you had before. He said. I'm going to sin more and God harden his heart. And he and his servant. Actually it says, and hardened his own heart. At this point he said his, because God hardened Pharaoh's heart. But at this point it says, he hardened his heart. Meaning he went directly against what he said he was going to do. Verse 35, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses. This is the seventh time that he did this. But as we know, when we look at the scripture, and most people know this part at least, how many times total did he do this? How many plagues were there? Ten times! Will you stop this? Okay, okay, now you stopped it. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm going to go back and do it. Come on, okay, I'm done. I'm, uh, mercy, uncle, stop it. Thank you. Go right back and do it again. Immediately, this time he did it yet the more. Understand church, when you come to God and you say I'm done, that needs to be a commitment that stays. That's not a commitment that you need to play around with. You need to be in a situation where you say, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to go back to that stuff. I'm not going to turn back to that stuff. I'm going to keep going forward and not go backwards. There's nothing to go back to. I am done with those things. But you know what happens with, with many people? Can I just have some fun today? Because I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. You know, whenever I preach long, it's just because I like being here. I don't get, I'm in the world all week long dealing with concepts of world, trying to pour out the spirit and the light on everything I, <clears throat> I'm around, but there's still darkness all around. So, <clears throat> let me explain. Many people, when they come to God, they come to God and they're all beat up. And, and, and the reason why they're willing to make those changes is because they don't like the discomfort that comes with their sin. And they don't like the feeling of loss and, and, and struggle and, and, and destruction. And so finally we say, I'm done. But when God comes in at your request, somebody say, oh, hear me. Say me. At your request, and usually God's last, they turn to parents and tradition, or they turn to old customs, they turn to a wife or a husband, they turn to grandma or grandpa, they turn to everything before they come to God. And when we, and I say they, I'm talking about people who are like Pharaoh, and when they finally come to God, he does it. He's the only one that does it. He's the only way that really gets rid of it. <clears throat> he does what he said he was going to do. And then what do we do? Oh, whew, it's gone. I was going to say thank God, but they don't thank God. They say, whew, it's gone. Wow, this is awesome. I feel so comfortable again. And, and, and I'm so glad that that's not here. And so, why don't we celebrate? 
I'm going to celebrate this good feeling. Let's say an alcoholic or a drug addict. You know, I was away from that stuff and I'm so hurt. And now I've got a little bit of 24s under my belt and I'm feeling good and got a job, got a little bit of money in my pocket. Let's go celebrate and do the very thing that was killing me in the first place. You know what you call that? Insanity. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's insane. We know what's going to happen when we pick up that drink or drug. When we pick up that sin of choice, that's our sin. Whether it be uh, drugs and alcohol or it be depression or anger or bitterness or, or whatever it is. We pick it up as our way of either celebrating or we just sometimes we just can't sit still with being good. Things are good. Some of us just got to cause drama. So what I'm trying to challenge you today, I'm trying to challenge the church to understand that when God does what he promised, hold on to it. We, we give it up so we, you know, we go back into that sin that what the Bible says so easily besets us. If we know how easy it is for us to slip back, then let's be vigilant about the things that are going to keep me out of the very destruction that I was in. This is so much like people today. God gets us out. He delivers us. And we go right back. Let's go on. Psalms 31 and 1. The chief musician being David. This is how we need to handle these things. <clears throat> Psalms 31 and 1. <sighs> Too many times, church, we don't have enough fear of the Lord. We fear other things. We fear, you know, it's amazing how we fear driving down the road. We, You know, my wife, if, 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 there's not a hole in the side of my car on, the, on her side where the feet are supposed to be. I would be shocked. As many times as she slams on the brakes that aren't there. You know, people have fear of so many things. People fear uh, losing finances. And, and they fear their bosses. And they fear their wives. Or they fear their husbands. Or they fear all kinds. Fear animals. But no one wants to fear God. When none of those things can do anything near what God can do and, or will allow or what you'll find yourself in without Him. Ask yourself, don't raise your hand and don't, don't you know, respond, but ask yourself in your own mind right now, what do you fear in your life? What do you fear? And then you can ask yourself, how much do I really fear God? I'm going to tell you how you can determine how much you fear God or not. That is determined by what you're willing to allow yourself to do. If you're willing to allow yourself to get into a bunch of behaviors that are sinful and that are against God, then you don't have a whole lot of fear of the Lord. And that's what I'm trying to pers pers persuade today, to persuade you to understand that we have to have the fear of the Lord. We have to respect God. And in this church we have all the people that are not here, I can almost guarantee you, is the main reason they didn't fear God. I'm going to tell you something. When I backslid six years ago over that divorce and the breakup between me and my pastor, and I say breakup like we're dating or something, but, but the fact of the matter is he was like my dad. I mean, we were very, very close. And so when I went through all that situation and I backslid by my responsibility, of which was my part of not taking the escape that God gave me and the responsibility that was in other people's hands or trying to push me down that direction or, or attacking me and wanting to destroy me, but when I went down that road, I remember, hear me close church, I remember the weekend, let me, let me go back to one before that. When I was in the old church, I remember there was, um, I'm going to be very honest with you, I'm going to be very candid with you, because I want, to be, I want to be transparent, I want to be real with you. There was a weekend, or it was a weekday actually, because I, I was teaching Bible study that day, but this is like in 2002 or 3, and during that day, I'd been involved in looking at pornography. I allow myself to look at something online and it moved to looking at something else. You got to be careful what you look at. I looked at one thing and it kind of led me to looking at something more graphic and before you know it, full porn. And I'm in the church. But I'm going to tell you something. I was scared to death. I was like praying God and I couldn't stop. It was like, like an afternoon and it was before Bible study was like 6 or 7 o'clock that evening. I got a Bible study to teach that night and I'm looking at porn. And I was scared to death. 
I was like, God, please don't come now. Now, I didn't even know enough about end time at that point to know that he probably couldn't come that, that moment. But, but I, was, I had fear of what God was seeing me do. And I felt horrible inside. But I couldn't stop until about an hour before the Bible study. And I finally stopped. I went. I was, in, I was in a computer room. I went to my room. I got on my knees. And I began to weep. I began to weep to God in repentance. And I paused. And said, God, I'm so sorry. And, and, and I let this thing get out of hand. And, and, and if you'll just cleanse me. And I knew he would. Because that's his mercy. He knows that we're human. But we're, that doesn't mean it's okay to do the wrong thing. And we need to have the right attitude. And I had the right attitude because I got on my knees. And I was like, God, I'm sorry. And you know, there's a lot more men that are involved in pornography than you know. There's a lot of pastors that are involved in pornography. I'm glad to say I'm not one of them. I can look you right in the eye and say, I don't have any problem with it. I used to have an extreme problem with that. Because when I was involved in my crack cocaine, pornography was directly connected with that. All the time. But understand. Because of my attitude towards fear of the Lord. I have no problem with that. I don't have any issue with that at all. I don't, have, I don't get tempted. It doesn't bother me. Why? Not because I'm great and powerful. But because he is great and powerful. Because I am afraid to disrespect my God. I'm afraid to do things that would hurt him. And that will eventually hurt me. I didn't mean to turn this into a men's thing. But we need to hear that. When we have men's ministry, when we come together, we don't just sit around and pat a kick about baloney issues. We talk real. And, and if any, I believe if any man in our church had an issue about that, that he would feel comfortable enough to open up and say, this is where I struggle. So that we could help him. And only a person who fears the Lord would be willing to talk about something shameful. Because it is shameful. It's, I, I was ashamed that I did it. But when I repented, I don't have to be ashamed because I'm turning from what my body wants to do naturally and say, I'm not going to allow that in my life because I've got fear of the Lord and I'm going to move forward in God and I want to please God and I'm not going to do those things anymore. <laughs> Praise God. That afternoon, about an hour before the Bible study, I repented. And guess what? I taught that Bible study. Some people say, oh, that's hypocritical. No, it wasn't. I repented. And not only did I repent, but I actually mentioned, I didn't tell him what I was doing. Because I don't think that would have been helpful for the, I can tell you because that was years ago. But I don't know if it would have been helpful for me to tell, oh by the way, <laughs> guess what I was doing all day. But I told them that I was in sin all, all afternoon. Didn't tell them what I was doing, it could have been anything. But I just told them that I was in sin all afternoon. And I actually used it as a part of my Bible study. To prove the power of God. To tell them I've been repenting for the last hour. And now God put it as far as the east is from the west. And now I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to continue to be free from that thing. And I'm still free from it today. <laughs> Woo! Praise God! That is the fear of the Lord. When I went through that... that, that, that well, years after that, I got involved in, and, and I didn't get, actually, I didn't even get involved in pornography that weekend. It was the weekend that I, I backslid. It was three days, February 2008, and I was using for three days. I went back to, you'd be shocked at how quick it comes back. I was selling drugs, back into the same old hotels, and you know where everybody is, and the same speech, my swear, came back like that. Been in the church seven years. And the swearing came in. I was talking trash and, and, and being aggressive. I was the same old person for three days. But I'll tell you what. There were certain things that kept snapping me back. I looked at my picture of my son on my phone. And I just couldn't have to put it away. I couldn't handle looking at my son. Ezekiel was only, you know, maybe 10, 11, 12 months, something like that. And I had this fear, it would keep, you know, God would keep kind of calling on me. And I, and I just, oh, I, I can't hear that right now. But I was praying, God, don't let me die this weekend. Because he may not be coming back. But see, now I was putting myself in danger. When I was involved in that situation that afternoon, you know, I, I wasn't in any physical danger of losing my life. I, I wasn't even driving a car unless I just fall over dead. Because even though he may not come, you can die before you repent and you're lost forever and there ain't no turning back and there ain't no way to go back there's no way to fix it there's no way to turn it around you're gone and you'll be gone for eternity and there's nothing that can happen to change it 
So at this point, I'm in the weekend, and I'm there, and I'm hanging around dope dealers, and, and I'm hanging around, you know, shady people, and I'm driving my car under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and I'm thinking, God, please don't let me die this weekend. Because I want to make heaven my home. I was scared, not scared enough to change behavior at that very moment. But I'm trying to encourage you to understand that we've got to have that fear, and that fear has got to lead us to action. That fear has got to lead. We can't just sit there and be afraid all the time. We have got to say, I'm so afraid I'm going to stop what I'm doing and get on with my walk with God. Understand, that's what we need in this church. A deep, deep respect and fear for the Lord. That weekend, after three days of being in a very dangerous situation with dangerous people, doing dangerous stuff, driving a vehicle, doing us running out of gas, walking in strange neighborhoods, I mean, just crazy stuff. But I had to walk through the shame on Monday. Made a phone call. I want you to come pick me up. I've been driving, I've been up for three days. Driving from Albuquerque to Gallup would be dangerous. Could lose my life then. I fell asleep on the way home in the pastor's truck. Got me a bite to eat. I hadn't eaten for three days. Got me a bite to eat at, at the fast food restaurant. Got in the back seat car and passed out. And I got back to the house and went inside and fell asleep again. And I slept for I think, a day and a half. But I'm going to tell you something. When that day came for me, to, that Monday morning came for me to make that phone call. I said, come pick me up. I had to face the piper I had to pay my dues I was going to have to go and hear me church hear me church I'm going to encourage you today you can do this because if I can stand up and get myself back into a place and go to a church service around everybody who I've been preaching to for years hard to you're not changed because you don't want to change and I just had a weekend of smoking crack a weekend of backsliding and I got to come home and face these people that I've been getting in their face for seven or six years, five years. I've been number two in the church. I'm the assistant to the pastor. You think there's some shame around that? I can guarantee you, but I was so fearful of the Lord. I had more fear of God than I did of facing people and having shame. More fear of God than fear of shame. So I went back into that place.